welcome everyone. This is our webinar for our investment group, which we have on different topics. And this webinar is really for educational purposes, as you know, and uh, not a financial really advice or legal advice. For those, we suggest that after listening to this, educate yourself and talk to your, uh, your legal person or your financial advisor and then make an informed decision. But uh, hopefully this will enlighten us in our financial knowledge. And uh, today, uh, I'm pleased to have our guest speaker, Dr. Bayo Fasanya. Uh, the thing that impresses me is this guy is a physician. Like most of us physicians, it's hard to find time, but he finds time to do a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, reminds me of another group, the Excite Capital, remember that spoke to us about real estate in the past. So I want to introduce him. I'm going to read a brief uh, bio about him, and then I'll, take, I'll give it over to him. Bio is the CEO and founder of uh, Bre Dr. Breathe Easy Capital. Breathe Easy, he's a pulmonary critical care specialist. So breathing is important. You know, we breathe every time, even when we're sleeping. Very, very crucial. His focus is increasing financial literacy among physicians and helping non-physicians and others have uh, achieved financial independence through investing. Bayo, along with his wife, Bridget, who is the manager, brought their, uh, bought their first multi-family uh, unit in 2018 and have accumulated 61 units in personal acquisition since then. I'm sure it's more now, which is impressive. Uh, that's just within uh, just over four years, almost five years. He has invested in over 20 startups and currently sits on the advisory board of a healthcare-related startup. He obtained his undergraduate degree with high distinction from the University of Toronto in Canada. He obtained his medical degree from Saba University School of Medicine, completed residency at Overlook Hospital in Summit, New Jersey, and fellowship at Allegheny General Hospital. Bio works as a pulmonary critical care specialist, as I've mentioned, at Baptist Health, Fort Smith. And is currently uh, both the pulmonary rehab director and the ICU director. Busy guy. Bio was a recipient of a gold snapshot award from Society of Critical Care Medicine in 2018. That's a high award. He's also a husband, proud father of three, and he likes blogging, traveling, and spending time with his family. His team currently has over $138 million worth of assets under management. Dr. Breathe Easy Capital has experience in self-storage, multifamily, oil and gas, and commercial real estate investment. And as we know, real estate is always a cornerstone of any wealth accumulation or the rich folks' real estate is very important. So without much ado, I'd like to introduce to you Dr. Bayo Fasanya. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Dr. Cliff. When you do the introduction, sometimes I wonder myself <laughs> how, you know, I get all these things done. But thanks to my wife, uh, mostly, you know, she's a stay-at-home stay mom, but that's usually a disguise because she's a real estate professional. She's, um, you know, kind of helped me with management. She talks to all the management team. She talks to the virtual assistants, and she makes sure that things are going according to plan so most of the time only when they there's fire burning <laughs> is when she'll call me at work so you know i get i have help and also we build teams you cannot do this alone so it's a teamwork overall as a general uh, real estate so i have a powerpoint you know i can just go over it a little bit you know just to kind of have something for people to look at uh, my objective today it's basically to share a little bit of my story as a physician and investor, and also to describe some of the financial objective of investing that I have come to understand. And finally, describe different real assets classes that I feel it can help achieve these objectives. So let me try to share my screen here. And as usual, when it's done, we ask questions either on this platform or on a WhatsApp group at the end. Thank you. Yep. And I really would love questions. So, of course, you know, for people that don't know me, you know, uh, Dr. Bayo, and, uh, you know, we always have to have this disclaimer. <laughs> you know, my lawyer makes sure of that. <laughs> so, we're not providing any personal investing, legal, or tax advice. 
we all have to consult with our licensed professionals. Even as much as I think I know enough about real estate, I still consult with my professionals, you know, when I do everything that I do, including even doing a PowerPoint. <laughs> so, like I said, we talk about, you know, go, uh, introduce and talk about, you know, our goals as a company, the my personal financial objective of investing and some asset class, and I will, you know, kind of go through my brain of how I kind of make these decisions. My experience, you know, is going about five years right now in real estate. I do other things before. I have done, you know, I do stocks also. I do crypto. I do multiple different asset classes. But right now, I'm probably going to say I'm about 50 to 60 percent real estate, and about you know maybe like three percent crypto, and you know uh, just kind of alternative random assets, <laughs> just less than 10 percent of my portfolio. And basically, stocks and real estate are the majority of it. So, so this is you know uh, we've been busy you know since 2018. Um, you know, I do, we do diversify also into Canada. We have, uh, you know, development that we're doing in Toronto, uh, Ontario, Canada. We also do uh, these reassignment homes. Uh, when they're profitable, they're really profitable in terms of, let's say someone is trying to do a, build a $500,000 home. And then, you have to put 10% down. So we put about, you know, 10% down, which is going to be 50,000. You can, by the time we finish building it in two years, oftentimes it's worth a lot more now. So you can reassign the house in, to someone else without having to close on the deal. So let's say you sell it for 700K, you could make that 200K on top of it. So that's what, you know, we do in Canada, you know, my parents are still there. My brother is there. So that's, you know, why I went to undergrad. So since then, uh, you know, we started acquiring also in the United States. Uh, as you can see, we started with like lower units, eight units, you know, some, you know, self storages, townhouses. Some of them are personal. and uh, Some of these are syndications, either with a partner or the one that we do by ourselves. The latest one last year we really went big, went for a 376 units in Northwest Arkansas, and uh, right now we're also doing a 129 unit. So that's just you know just a little bit of uh, what we've been up to. As you can see, we've been very busy uh, in the past five years. So another thing is you know. Why do I do this? You know, they always tell us that you have to know your why, you know, and that's a common question people ask me. And most of the time I throw financial freedom out there, you know, because I'm part of the FIRE community. And the FIRE community is all about reaching financial independence, right? And retiring early. Okay. But over time, I've come to realize other importance important things also like time freedom okay right now i'm 36 and you know i always feel like by the time i'm in my 40s or worst case scenario in my 50s i want to have enough time to do other things that i want to do you know rather than just working all the time but you cannot do this especially in america without having a backup or some form of income that is you're generating that will allow you to have this freedom. So that's one of the reasons why I have to do this. And also health, uh, abundance also. I want to, you know, well, you know, I was just talking to a surgeon today and this, you know, the surgeon was just telling me he has back pain, you know, and, uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, he was in his fifties you know, and he's complaining about that. So, you know, your your health, it will suffer, you know, if you work, you know, too long and too too hard over a long period of time. And also personal uh, sovereignty, 
which is similar to career autonomy. Most of the people that become doctors or even high income earners or highly educated people, they don't like people telling them what to do. Okay. So it's just a it's a daily battle. <laughs> you know, right now I'm still work for my organ, you know, for my uh, hospital. I don't have a private practice at this time. So, you know, there's always a balance of it that I run my own business in which I have a lot more control. At the same time, when I go to work, you know, they tell you how many patients to see, how many minutes to see the patient, and you can't do this, you can't do that. So it's kind of, you know, does not fit well <laughs> perfectly, you know, in a way. So your goal is to, you know, find a way to decrease things that doesn't make you happy and do more things that make you happy over a long period of time. Um, you know, we also talk about uh, wealth, you know, and financial freedom, okay? So we all know that wealth can be measured in different ways, right? So we always say, you know, we always measure um, wealth as it relates to financial freedom, you know, but it can be measured in many ways, right? So there's wealth of knowledge, relationship, social capital, uh, okay? But I want to emphasize that money as capital is really only a tool, okay, that can be used to realize, you know, other more impo important form of wealth, okay? We also know like uh, health is wealth also. So financial freedom is the result of effectively using money as a tool. So money buys you at that time, health, you know, network also. Because if you, you know, I was listening to uh, Grant Cardone um, recently, and he talks about reason why he fly first class, you know, because I'm normally a frugal person. I would never, you know, <laughs> I never flew first class. So it talks about the kind of people that you meet there, you know, the networking, you know, so that if you fly first class, you meet other people that are first class, you know, you meet. So, and it's interesting that, um, you know, having money allows you to be a different level of social economic status and the kind of people you meet, the kind of people even your kids meet, you know, so uh, very, very useful. So overall objective, okay? So your tools help you work on the overall objective that will lead to financial freedom, okay? And these objectives may be different for each person. And uh, you have to define what your objectives are, okay? For some, it's to replace the income from your job. And from other people, it's to just improve your standard of living. And for many, it's just to secure their retirement years, okay? So we get to financial objectives of investing your money capital, so which can be based on um, individual circumstances, like I said. Uh, but basically, one can hope to obtain uh, capital appreciation, meaning you know grow your net worth, and uh, capital preservation also to protect what you already earn. And um, also, some people want cash flow. So you know, you want, some people want just appreciation. Some people want uh, preservation, cash flow, tax shelter. So it also depends on what kind of uh, stage of life you are. Are you in your accumulation phase of life? In the accumulation phase of life, the capital appreciation, you know, is what you're really looking for. So after a while, you start working on capital preservation. I talked to an investor yesterday who she's in her, she's 60 years old, right? She wants to retire in five years and she's asking me what kind of, you know, investment, you know. So for that person, capital preservation is the utmost important, you know. You're not chasing the gains, you know. If you have an investment that will give you 4% at that age, you'll be, it's better than an investment that will promise you 12%, 15%, but they're very risky because you don't have enough time to maneuver, you know, at 60 you know, unless you're really, really wealthy already. And some people also need a tax shelter. So there's also other uh, objectives. You know, some people want to be aggressive, conservative, short-term hold, long-term hold. Everybody likes different type of things. So I'm aggressive uh, by nature. 
you know and uh <laughs> my wife oftentimes be like are you not just like you know let's just hold on i'm like no i have another hundred units i want to buy over there so you know but everybody's um uh, objective is different bigger is also not always better so you know just for people to understand all this okay you can also decide whether i want to be active passive or semi-passive so many people you know everybody be like oh i want to buy multifamily you buy multifamily after a while you get tired of operating people calling you and discussing something broke and suddenly you don't want to be active anymore or some people are passive and after a while they're like i want to try to do you know to be more active in this real estate thing so they buy a duplex so you basically have to figure yourself out to decide which kind of want you know what do you want and other things is also legacy you know some people do it for legacy so people want to say look i leave 100 house for my children okay if that's you know what you're looking for or a farm you know you have a farm or you have a business also your philosophy matters too we do have uh, investors that say i cannot invest in oil and gas because i uh, you know i believe in climate you know i believe in renewable energy so that's their own opinion and that's what their objective is so you just have to find a way to fill that objective or direct them to somewhere else where they can get that done so i'm going to go over some you know asset classes that you know either me or my partners have been involved with in the past we all know about single family and a single family is a common investment right low barrier to entry okay so you can just buy one in fact you can convert the house that you're living in and you move out to buy another house and you can use it and just rent it out so that's the way many people we call them the accidental landlord okay so they just you know become a landlord because they moved from a house and they didn't want to sell it they rent it out you know and then we have you know oil and gas storage retail offices so there's multiple of these like you know asset classes so we're going to be talking more uh later on about you know different things for each one so for example single family right single single family then itself can also be divided into multiple segments right so single family you can have a long term you can have short term rentals you can do a wholesale or fix and flip or you can have a development you know you can develop like a whole neighborhood or just one house development so each one of them has different advantage like for example long term single family you're not really cash flow it's very difficult to cash flow a single family you know so most people are waiting for the appreciation so you hear people that said oh i bought a house in 2008 for ninety thousand dollars now it's worth you know six hundred thousand dollars so it's mostly for appreciation. Short-term rental is mostly for cash flow, but at the same time, it is very active. You know, it's more active than other form of rentals because the people are constantly moving out. And even if you have a manager, they'll constantly call you to do, you know, to change things, what to do. And it, it, it's very active overall. Fix and flip is also very active wholesale is active you have to find a deal you know flip it sell it but you can make a lot of money uh we do at least one flip a year uh you know my wife loves flip you know she loves to do flips so you know but in one flip you can make like 60k 90k um you know and you know but it requires work you have to go constantly check on the property you know because everything is like for example, if we buy a multifamily, even if it's a lot of units, we renovate, you know, very slowly over like maybe a year or two. But if you're doing a flip, sometimes within two months, you're trying to flip the whole house. So it requires like a lot of work. Uh, but you can make a lot of money in the short term period. And so is the development. So um multifamily, if that's where, where you're going right with multifamily there's more scale right and you know and therefore it's more predictable right so but however it has a conservative cash flow right and appreciation 
but the difference you know there's a difference between the mid and the large which is 75 units uh, most of us uh for personal units are going to stay here you know my largest personal unit is about 33 units so um you know but when you want to do like syndications mostly you go for higher units because of the economy of scale you know you have uh you know only one roof you know or maybe few roof versus having a 75 single family homes in which you have to fix each individual roof at, you know individually and also you know but uh you know it's very passive um development you know like we talk about mostly it's very good with appreciation so every single thing you do to the land improves the value so we had one a while ago we bought the land for one million dollars and then the developer said you know if you put another one million dollars to develop it now it's going to be worth like three million dollars now if you build 70 units on it now it's worth this amount of money so every single thing that you do you know it's appreciation but the problem is everything is stuck in it right the money is stuck you know until you cash out with finance or you sell you really not getting a lot of cash flow because especially if it's a class a property if it's a very nice neighborhood you're not really going to be um you know getting a lot it's not like uh you know class c property where you can buy for cheap and have a high rent in this case most of the time you, it's expensive to build and then the rent you're going to slowly aggress you know slowly build it up so but it's also a good tax shelter you know for development so i'm just trying to you know just talk about you know different assets and also like what are the advantages and kind of uh, the main focus of each one and how we think about the acquisitions so you know one can also invest in drilling you know oil and gas companies which are you know are very attractive to us as physicians uh one of it is you can actually get a deduct it against your w2 income so we've been using that a lot nowadays because um so many high income owners will come to us and ask we cannot get um i cannot get it of this w2 income you know so uh, oil and gas you can deduct the depreciation against any income so um it's also resi recession resistant uh because of the um energy demand right energy demand is always you know remain high you know except during COVID, you know and that was short term there's also agriculture uh, my partner uh, george ozodi he invested in some agri agricultural land and uh, he thinks mostly those are for legacy some of these plants trees will take 15 years to grow but immediately after that though it will be you know decent cash flow and also it might cash flow for like many decades decades so you know and that's that's something to think about and also these are legacy things you know like back home we've had a you know family that live like a cocoa farm to their children right they're like oh you know i own this cocoa farm palm trees and uh you know pistachio farm you know over here so you that those can really make you you know legacy so if you that's what you're looking for so basically find what you what you want in terms of um objective and then find the kind of investment that's fulfilled that uh, objective like you know storage when we do storage storages are usually very cash they have they're very cash flow heavy okay but the you know they're recession resistant also but they don't appreciate very much because there's not a lot of things around it's usually boxes you know metals building and there's not a lot of things to depreciate also there's not a lot of depreciation in storage because to get depreciation and tax benefit you have to have things to to 
to depreciate, like um, you know, like uh, HVAC. You know, you have a roof, you have a lot of things, um, but the, but the storage is just a four wall building for most part, and so there's not a lot of things to do there. Um, so other ones to just talk about, you know, we talk about medical office, uh, which is operational burden. You know, you can have medical offices, but it's just, you know, it's a lot of cash flow, but it's some of sometimes it can be very active also, you know. And uh, we've been involved in two senior living, and uh, senior livings are good, but the same thing, you're not just operating a building. You're operating with people and also people that are in senior living. These are protected individuals, right? So these are people that are older. So your, your liability is a little bit higher, you know, for to, buy, to do this. But if you run it well and you're very honest and genuine, you will, you know, you do great. Uh, because of what we call the uh, silver tsunami, which you know, we know, all know about the uh, the older generation. They are all getting old at this point in time, and there there are enough data that are saying that we're not going to have enough places to house, you know, to house them. So there need to be a lot of senior living that needs to be built overall, and. Uh, so let's go. So uh, some people also do things like mineral rights, uh, precious metal. You know, you read about it that people talked about gold, you know, and things like that. Precious metals and um, you know, conservative easement. And uh, do anybody know about conservative easement here? Yes, actually we do. We had a webinar on this oh, about nice. a year and a half ago. Okay. About, yes, which is also a very good tax shelter if you get the right one. Yes, it is. Um, you know, uh, unfortunately, uh, very recently people are abusing it a lot, and it's been on the central of attraction to the IRS. <laughs> so, um, so just to be careful with that, but. It is definitely a very good way uh, to um, have tax shelter. And some people get up to one to four, even up to one to five of how much money they invest to deduct. So that's just like putting 100K and ability to deduct 300 to 500K. So, you know, and you can see why <laughs> a lot of people, you know, uh, could get into trouble if you misuse it. Yeah, Trump uses it a lot. I I heard. I mean, yes. All you have to do is con uh, donate. You donate your right. land to some cause, and then you know. As, or, but you won't be able to build on that land, so that's the problem. So, but then you have to get the tax benefit. So, and uh, you know. So we're just gonna you know end with other things like other investment strategies. I hope. Um, you know, we all been doing this 401k, IRA, HSA, and things like that. And um, so your strategy also should include, especially uh, if you're trying to save on tax, you know, what, what kind of money do you want to withdraw at retirement, right? So that matters. Like if you want your money to be tax-free, right? So if you invest with your IRA, especially Roth IRA, you know, self-directed, in, in that case, you withdraw, you know, tax-free. So all your gain is tax-free, okay? So if you do with 401k, you save the tax now, but you pay the tax later. But sometimes it might be better for you to save the tax now if you're a high-income earner, right? If your tax bracket is 40% now, and you think, you know, you just want to work enough to retire, and you move to Florida or a nice state that is very <laughs> favorable towards retirement income, 
you know so you might be paying far much less tax in the future so it's just um you know so that's something to consider in your investment strategy also so and also you should be aware of the demographic trends also um you know we talk about the baby boomer and the silver tsunami when you know that is happening so you might want to do some you know there are some uh community now that is getting common like this will be like over 55 community you know so it's not a luxury it's not a senior living but it's just like you have to be over 55 with this amount of income to live in this area and it will be a very nice neighborhood self-sufficient neighborhood and that is being built also just to cater to the baby boomers and uh, you should know the uh, macroeconomic trends also is very important right you know the energy demand we all know oil and gas is not going to go away but now we're moving to renewable energy so you know in the next 10 years you know there will be a big change right in the energy demand you know so those are just those things to keep in mind and central regulations right if the government is talking about you know global warming every day and climate change then you might want to think about your investment strategy to adjust to that okay um for me with investment i try not to think of what needs to be right i don't try to be you know i try to be objective you know i go with the tides so if the tide is saying well you're going to get tax credit if you buy electric car and things like that then i move towards that you know if they said oh we're doing you know this uh they're giving credits for you to build in this neighborhood you know i'm like okay let's do that and then so anyway so that's uh it's good to go with the trends so you know so just summary i know i've gone through a lot <laughs> and it's kind of a, uh you know we're you know just kind of going through things uh without interaction so i hope there will be a lot of questions soon um so you know just identify your why okay so when you must be able to say it in one nice sentence like why are you investing okay is it to set a legacy you know spend more time with family retire early you know i think everybody should at least have some why and i do know people though that think they can work forever they're like oh i don't need to i just can work for it. i said it's not a matter of whether you, you mentally you want to work it's about your body will tell you that it doesn't want to <laughs> so if you're a surgeon you know you you love surgery i mean you love it. i have known doctors they've been like they're 70 they're still operating but you know if you operate a 12 hour procedure your body will tell you now at that time that <laughs> this is a, this is not a old man's game anymore and it's not because you're not smart you're smart you're skillful but you know so that's something to consider um even when you think you can work forever is that ultimately everybody slows down so it's good to be prepared for those times and um yeah and remember money is a tool and uh, you don't always have to have 100 million dollars you know you should find a number you know maybe talk to your personal uh, financial advisor and they tell you you need five million dollars to retire you know as for some people they just want that five million bucks and they just retire okay and live a fruitful life so um so i have a uh, you know how to get in contact you know we can just ask questions any oh. questions sorry i <laughs> know oh. i went <laughs> i went a lot but uh yes dr bio dr breathe easy wow very very lots of information useful information i'm i'm very impressed and i'm sure our people have a lot of questions and i have some too but before i ask i want to thank you again for presenting and also i want to thank bridget uh your wife right yes okay because you. yeah <laughs>
yeah I guess the engine behind yes because you said it yourself and that takes actually a a, a a real man to admit that it's not all about him but it's a teamwork and your wife is the engine behind it and uh, interestingly you guys are 50 to 60 percent real estate and stocks and then starting 2018 within five years you've accomplished uh, so much I like the way you broke it down to us, uh, single family residents, then multi family, oil, gas, etc. That actually makes sense to organize it. And then I like the core values, very important. What is it that's motivating you to invest? Even if it's not real estate in anything, you know, financial freedom, time freedom. People have, some people have a lot of money, they have no time to spend it. <laughs> some people have a lot of time, there's no money to enjoy it. So it's a balance. Health very important you know uh personal sovereignty and career autonomy very very important so for a doctor to be saying this i am I'm, I'm very impressed and then finally i learned from you that money is a tool you emphasize that i always knew that but it's good to emphasize that you know money is a tool that can allow us now to gain or buy things that we consider important to us you know buy time even your health or relationships and uh, leisure. So thank you. Before I say much or ask my own question, I want to open it up to our participants. Whoever has a question, you can speak or you can raise your hand. And if you want, you can also type in our WhatsApp forum and I can ask it for you. Thank you. Everybody, don't be shy. Oh, you know all these things already. I'm the only one that you know doesn't know all these things. I think Chukudi raised his hand. Okay, go ahead, Chukudi. Unmute yourself. Yeah, and... yeah Dr. Um, Adebayo, this is very, very, very impressive just to see. It would have been nice to see you, Chukwudi. This is a new year. We haven't seen you this year. <laughs> I'm finding me. I'm looking to see. <laughs> There's nothing to see. Okay, let me, let me put my... Put your uh, video on. At least we'll see you briefly. You can turn it off later. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, I've not changed the same. The same old. So, uh, okay, start my video. Okay, yeah. So, um, so this is very, very impressive. And, you know, as physicians, you wonder how you were able to get into these different arrays of investment uh, um, uh, styles and you're able to manage work with that. So this is, this is very, very, very impressive. Um, I have a couple of questions. You know, I know you have, I think you probably will be a very good resource uh to see because you've been in, in a in a broad spectrum kind of investment types you'll be a very good resource to you know you know to tell us in terms of your um your number one you know because you have a lot but there's one that you that is very close to your heart and then the reason why you know because when i look through what you've done i see a lot of things that i i pick interest in my most important one is Comparing the multi-family, because I noticed here in America, there's a little bit of gravitation into the multi-family uh, kind of uh, investment style, rather than the uh, the um, what do you call it the um, the commercial the commercial uh, rentals you know, building and all that. You didn't talk a lot about it, but that's usually what I I usually tend, tend towards having like a commercial. Uh, rentals, which doesn't give you a lot of problems in terms of people calling you or your manager calling you to do these repairs, you know, um, with the family lets, you know, they usually, the, the stress of dealing with people calling you, trying to deal with the repairs is something that pulls me, that, you know, pulls me off a little bit. But, um, but obviously you know better because you've tried all the, all the different subsets and you know a little bit ones that are more suitable for us because we are having these lectures because we are doctors that have doesn't don't have a lot of time but we need that little time to count and then the second question i wanted to ask is really a digging deep into the oil like you talked about re um it, about rigs it might be um uh, you know it's very interesting to know a little bit more about that um that's my i guess there's a lot to ask but just a little okay. like a surprise quickly to trade out there thank you okay well thank you uh, chikudi so I, what I get is three things. So one is which one is my favorite, um, you know, investment. Like which one is do I think is the you know that I, I like the most. Number two, 
why don't we do more commercial or why are people not gravitating towards more commercial instead of doing multifamily? And the third is to talk a little bit more about oil and gas. So first one about my favorite. Right now, I'm gonna say with a very slight uh, tilt, it's gonna be multifamily. So the reason for multifamily is the economic of scale of it. And also the multiple things you can do to multifamily to increase the value. The way the price of multifamily is valued is about the net operating income. You know, you can do that with commercial too, but you can do a lot more to it. Like, for example, you can buy a multifamily, like, you know, like one we're buying now, you know, you, the rent is like maybe $200 below market and it's in good area down the street. You know, it's renting like 700, but right now it's only renting 400 or 450. You know that if you can fix it, make it look like the other one inside and a little bit of dressing it on the outside, you can make it, you can get the same rent. Also, I feel like you're also fulfilling a more important role personally for multifamily, giving people a place to live. Um, you know, for me, to me, that's you know more powerful to me than giving a company a place to stay, right? Or storage, a place for people to store their belongings. We do all of those, but uh, but multifamily, I think it it has a lot of potential. What you can do to it, and how you can improve the the value with multifamily, you can raise the rent like every year, right? Or whenever people move out. The problem I do have with commercial, we do have three offices. But one of them, we have about five year lease on one. So which means it's nice, it's stable, but I cannot raise the rent for five years now. So it will give you return, but the return are very uh, moderate return versus multifamily. But you're right, if you can get into a triple net lease, they fix everything, they even renovate the thing, they do everything. So you don't have to worry about it. But to be honest, I don't think you're going to really beat the stock market with just commercial by itself. Unless you really find a very good one below market, or maybe it's not rented, and you rent it out. So because you bought it at low price because of mismanagement, right? But after mm -hmm. you've done that, there's not a lot more you can do. That's just all based on my own experience. Well, with mother, with mother family, you can be like, okay, here's a little small space beside it. Let us build a storage beside it, and then people can rent the storage for an extra 50 bucks. Oh, here's a carport. Oh, we put some charger here. Oh, here's some, uh, we can, you know, we can put laundry machine. So, you know, there's a lot of things you could do. You can convert a three bed, two bedroom, one bath, so a three bedroom, two bath, if there's enough square foot with multifamily. So, you know, I just think it's diverse, like the, uh potential of a lot of things to do with it that's why people like about the family and it's the easy easiest one to scale right i was doing like four units eight units and then suddenly 120 units 300 units you know <laughs> so it's it doesn't take much more work believe it or not to do a 300 units versus a 70 unit you know, it takes a lot of work to move from that smaller one, from five to uh, 75 to 75 and above. But once you get to that, now you can afford a better management team, right? When you're mm -hmm. lower, you have this management team that are like gonna call you all the time. They, they they only have one staff, you know, and somebody's sick, they can't fix your stuff. But with a big, uh, once you get to a certain level, you get discount on insurance, you get discount on, um, you know, even contractors, right? Because they're like, oh, well, you do it for $6,000 each, but uh, you're gonna be doing 129 units for me. So for, what about 4,500 for each one? <laughs> you know, so mm -hmm. yeah. So economic of scale, lots of diversity and things you can do with it. And so that's it for that. While, you know, uh, people are successful in commercial too, but that just me. And uh, oil and gas, 
we can set up a meeting at some point. We have uh, what on our YouTube. We talk about a oil and gas deal. Um, we had one before, you know, which we had with King uh, Operatives. And this is a oil exploration. There's multiple ways, just like multifamily or single family. There's multiple ways to make money from that. And there's another one called the carbon capture. So that one is basically they have this uh, clean way to basically extract the oil and basically also kind of save the environment at the same time. So that was very in tune with some of our investors that talk, that love those kind of things. Okay. So you try to basically find, you know, you give questionnaire to your investors and they'll give you what they want. And you can use that data to decide what you're doing. So we can talk all that guys a lot more. It's like almost like a separate thing of its own, but it definitely, it's more risky a little bit because the price of oil goes up and down. So, and also your capital is not preserved like real estate. So once you invest in oil and gas, usually your capital is gone. So everything will be given to you in form of return. So you can, yes, you can get 2x return, 3x return, even 4x return over the same amount of time. But the fact is, if the price of oil goes to $25 instead of $190, I think it is now, then you get no, no distribution. So everything which is just the same thing. So you have to decide what your objectives are. You know, how much timeline do you have? Uh, what are you know? What are your goals? If your goal is just to save on W two income, yes, oil and gas is very good because you do that and you can save. You know, just the tax benefit itself might make it worthwhile, even if you don't make a lot of money from the investment itself, right? I'm not sure if I answered that enough for what your question. <laughs> That was that was awesome. Yeah, you you answered my uh, you, you answered my question. Last, I don't want to dominate too much. The last thing I you for, I, I forgot to ask you was this whole end thing that is going on about the chat uh, GTP, especially in real estate. Do you have any idea of how the chat GTP can be used effectively in real estate? Because that has been the trend for the past few weeks since uh, Microsoft bought a large share of the of the open AI. Well, I mean, it's going to change a lot of industry, but until it's finally a final product, to be honest, I like, there's so many things that have been hyped in the past that never live up to their expectation. So, you know, it's still under, it's still, you know, in the preliminary stages, but it looks because Elon Musk is involved, you know, I'm going to say that I'm an Elon Musk fan, so, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> so I think it's going to be likely to be successful. <laughs> I think it has a high chance of being successful, so I agree. But things take time. Things take time. Like for example, when everybody thinks everybody's going to be driving an electric car, you know, it's 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 catching on, but we're probably still about ten years behind or fifteen years before everybody will start driving it, right? But they've been talking mm -hmm. about it for twenty years. That oh, and also you know how many times they've been talking about. Uh, Artificial intelligence is going to replace doctor. And mm -hmm. so far, <laughs> I'm, I'm not seeing it so far. I mean, it's, it's happening slowly, but it has no, not happened the, on the last it year. Is, it is. You it said? is happening. It just depends on like the radiologist, you know, uh, with the deep brain learning. You know, a, a lot of the radiologists, uh, it's, a, it's a big threat for the radiologist. It depends on where you are. You know, oh. it's not good everything but you know but that's 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 a good perspective i think i you know we need to talk i i like your spirit your spirit is very motivational i like your spirit we need to talk <laughs> no problem very good questions now you 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 go we went above the head of some of us chat gpt you're talking about you didn't <laughs> explain to us what that is but that's okay i think it has to do with artificial intelligence that's what i know so far well, it has passed the usmle just yeah, no. I saw that. That's how I knew. That's what, actually, Amadou, one of the guys that put this together with me, sent me that stuff, and I was shocked. He sent me the article where it passed the USMLE. It made the minimum required uh, without actually practicing the test before. So that's, that's impressive. Yeah. That was on. That was on the first because usually they do 
they get better with a, you know the reason just on a baseline he was able to pass it so meaning that if he goes the second time it scores almost 90 percent it is amazing chat gdp is something that is phenomenal it is because i use it right now you type in something give some instruction with it if you want a contract it's so good that if you want to sign if you want to draft a, a, a contract just go there put in what you want within a split second it gives you a two page of a beautiful contract that you don't even have to play play pay a lawyer or somebody to put it all together for you so chukode maybe mm -hmm. in the future you come give us uh, <laughs> give us some <laughs> No, no, really. On I this, agree on this with platform. that. I think the Chukudi guys should give us a presentation on this. Thank you. Thank you <laughs> for speaking up, please. So Chukudi, we have to engage you to, and other people can help you. I'm sure there are others uh, that might okay. be able to. This will see. He's into all this <laughs> stuff too. So yeah, it'd be educational for us. You know, we want to learn and get involved. Any question from someone else, please? We're, we're moving on. We're almost at the hour mark, you know, but... It's been very lively and impressive. Any other questions? Ngozi, you have a question? I typed it in. Oh, you did? Where? In the WhatsApp? Yeah, into your thing. Oh, my goodness. I, it doesn't I, work? No, no. Let me check on WhatsApp. I've been I've been listening attentively. No, not in WhatsApp, but inside this app that we're using. Oh, in the, in the chat group. Let me see. Come I didn't on. check. Let me see. Chat, chat, chat. No, I don't see any chat oh, to me. No, no. No, no, well, this is Maybe not. We can uh, use the uh, the artificial intelligence to help you because for that issue. Uh, <laughs> as you can as chat no, but you know, I prefer to you to speak. Go ahead and ask your question. Basically, basically, I wanted to find out how difficult or easy it is to get into this multifamily type investment. Like, what are your upfront costs? Um, and how do you find these types of units? Is it the same Zillow, Redfin, or is there some other? Um, softer app out there that people use and then um what are the cons of this type of investment okay well so thanks Ngozi. so first question i need to ask you is are you talking about actively or passively do you want to own actively or do you want to invest as a passive investor passive okay so for passive you know usually you I say the most important thing, to be honest, is to trust the operators. So there's a lot of people doing this, okay? If you Google online, real estate syndication, there's gonna be like 500 companies that will show up, okay? Including Grant Cardone, okay? <laughs> the big boy oh, my every, everywhere, okay? <laughs> my... <laughs> you know, Robert, Robert Kiyosaki, you know, like they're it. all doing syndications. Uh, Julius, you know, Julius is my friend, XI Capital. Is doing it so everybody's doing it so i think one thing is trust because i always tell people 100 percent return of zero is zero so if you cannot find the people <laughs> or you don't know how they operate and you can't you know you don't know what's happening to your money it doesn't really matter how much they promise you so that's number one we do offer webinar every two weeks you know uh talk to people about you know, the educational webinar, just the same way like you guys, which we have no, as you noticed, I didn't have like, you know, we have deals, but I'm not, I didn't even bring it, you know? <laughs> so we try to make sure it's educational, you know, to talk to, you know, people. And then, so there's, if you're talking about how we find our deal, you can, once you find a deal on Zillow, it's too late, okay? Because we find every deal off market. So we've become big enough now that whenever people in the area find it, find something that need to sell, they usually give us a three months head start, you know, or a couple of months to say, okay, do you want this deal? I'm like, okay, let me give it to my acquisition manager. Let them analyze the deal. So if you see a deal on Zillow, multifamily deal, or see them on Craigsy on all these sites, that means at least maybe like 10 operators, you know, have looked at it and determined that this is not a good deal. So it's going to take God's grace for you to now take that deal and make it work. So, so I would say do not look for deals on the market. So the best is to find people. We use something called uh, list source. 
list source is an app which we use basically you can list all the name of every multi-family owner in the region so my region is uh, Arkansas. so i use the uh, tulsa oklahoma city uh, little rock northwest Arkansas, and sometimes dallas sometimes houston because i have a partner there dr uh, ozudi um george so you, then you get all the list of every single one and then since we want to buy between maybe five million to ten million dollars then you will find all of them and find the owner and then you hire we hire like virtual assistants who will start harassing these people <laughs> they call them <laughs> you know maybe they'll, don't let me say harass <laughs> you know they'll start uh putting they push. some uh, gentle pressure yes yes <laughs> No, they do harass, so I get some of those calls. We continue. Yeah. I know. Do you want to sell? Do you want to sell? And believe it or not, it's a numbers game. Usually somebody will break, <laughs> you know, and something happens in people's life. And, uh, you know, jokes yes. aside, uh, we, it tends to be a win-win situation. Like somebody's, let's say their wife died. They really don't want to keep going with all these properties and they want to sell it. Or yeah, after just the owners. Yeah, After two owners are, hello yeah distressed sellers yeah and there's some uh, there's absentee owners are the, my favorite absentee owners are people i'm an absentee owner on some deals too we have a storage in houston which you know i, I look at it like maybe once in six months right so but if you have bad management i will walk into some units i look around and we find like grasses are overgrown right and it's not being taken care of so we take the pictures send it to the owner and say look your property is not being managed properly do you want us to take it off your hand um you know many times they will so that's a good one too so basically we have people who are always constantly searching we also have wholesalers wholesalers are people that find deals they walk knock doors find the deal they put a little bit of markup on it let's say they find the deal for like five million dollars they will say, I want 100K on top. And you know, and you pay them the 100K and take the deal. If the deal is so awesome, right? And this is somebody, you know, so that's somebody that make money by just being proactive and looking for deals. You get the deals, you make money by, you know, syndicating it. So that's how we find deals. And, uh, you know, I hope I answer your questions, but mostly we have a portal. You know, I post it here, or you can just message me, email, WhatsApp, text. You know, we have this bling. Let me see if it clicks. Um, you know, uh, so we have. Uh, are you guys seeing my page? Yeah, we're, we're seeing. So we have. You know, this is myself. No, we don't see the page. No, we don't see the page. We see the blink link, but we don't. When you clicked oh, on it, no. it didn't go to okay, your. No. Never mind. I'm not sure what's going on. So I just go go back. Anyway, so the I see we, the photo. Oh, oh so we have that. We have email. email. We have a uh, YouTube. Um, and we do bi-weekly webinars where people can learn. We don't, you know, tell talk about our deals in those webinars, but we do talk about other deals that we're doing. Um, in other other week, like you know, in between the webinars, we talk about other deals. But, um, but yeah, so that's how it is. So you just basically find an operator that you trust, or at least you want to give a chance. And usually they will give you a webinar. You watch about the return, what kind of investment it is, what are they doing? If you get on the portal, you can see them. You can see all the old investments. You can watch the videos. You can ask about the status of them and you know and that can help you and in our whatsapp group too you can find people that have invested with us before you can private message them get a you know unadulterated um you know referral like or basically opinion from them so what's your whatsapp group how do we get to the whatsapp group yeah so do i let me just stop this and um i'm gonna put this because i'm in your whatsapp group too yes I'm if you can talking. while we're waiting for the next question i'm going to get it to you guys now 
Okay, cool. Yeah, put it in our group. Now, I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to over ask questions. How is yours different? Because I know I've watched uh, uh, Grand Cardone. They have this similar type deal. I'm on your website right now. They have similar type deals. You know, promise twenty three to eight twenty eight percent. How does it? How is this different? Because sometimes I, I think that you know something. Sometimes they. This is like a, a kind of a marketing that if you really go in, it's not. It's not same. So how is your? How is yours? different from this big um you know the big fish that will definitely leave you with not a lot how is your how is your distant different so we run a lane operation right so mm -hmm. right now i have an acquisition manager i have a management team and i have my wife and i have a bunch of virtual assistants someone like grant cardone has like 50 people just the social media team them itself they're like probably like 20 of them right mm -hmm. so there's a lot of people to pay you know nothing is cheap so that is usually the difference between bigger people and the uh, early stage you know if you ask me the honest truth you know do i want to become big too <laughs> so sometimes it happens that you get big and you lose that part too i become one of those people too you know but as it stands now well in this stage in which also you can't text Grant Cardone and call him and be like, hey, you're going to talk to, you know, customer service representative, you know, whereas for me, you can text me if I come, if I'm not available today, maybe tomorrow, you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. you can reach our team very easily. We're going to update you, you know, we have a Zoom meeting, you know, you, people have Zoom meeting with me directly. It's not like a member of my team, you know? so you know so that's usually what it is the personal you know just like a small boutique shop versus a wool warehouse <laughs> so uh, that's mm -hmm. what it is um but at the end of the day though um we also very local to many of our deals or at least you know we vet our partners a lot so if a deal is down the street for me five minutes you better be sure that we're checking on it every day you know so mm -hmm versus some of the bigger team they they spread so thin that these are the people that have the absentee owners that are we're trying to get deals from because some of the some of their deals will fall apart because they're not they're just not paying attention they, they're too far or they're not they don't even know because like i said you know you i'm pretty sure many of these big people have deals that they've never even visited before right Mm -hmm. yeah, they have a deal somewhere in california and they live in the south and they never visited the property before right so mm -hmm. the question is would you rather invest with someone like that you know or and many of the time they're not even involved in the actual operations too most of them they're just like sales people now mm -hmm. uh, or, you know so yeah that's what it is there's lots of uh yeah there's a lot of options out there so I'm going to ask a question now. I know Ngozi asked you about passive multifamily, right? You yeah. said to find a repeatable company you trust. So I want to ask you about active. And it doesn't have to be the, uh, let's say the mid multifamily, right? Not the large, which is over 75 units. So not everybody in our group is a doctor. I mean, we have not medical doctor. We have PhDs. We also have nurses and business people. Yeah. Not all of us have uh, a lot of cash reserve. So say I, I want to start. I don't have too much money. What is? How do you advise me? How do I get the startup capital to get into this? And then how do I proceed gradually to get to maybe half of where you are, or a third eventually, <laughs> where you are in five years? So, um, so some people start with passive also. But like you said, our minimum is like fifty thousand dollars, you know, for hours. So to some it's small, some some is big. But for active, I can tell you how I started. You know, okay. there's not no other way than to strap down and save some money in the beginning. I was I'm I'm very creative in terms of money, so I actually took a line of credit for my first buy. It was highly risky. I do not advise it for everybody. Mm. So, but I do know that the deal was so great that I felt 
that I could be able to pay my mortgage and the line of credit at the same time. And it panned out, it worked out. But that's what I did, you know. I found a two hundred and seventy thousand dollar unit. I, uh, you know, took hundred k line of credit. I put fifty seven or sixty thousand dollar down, and um, you know, but it was cash flowing ridiculously. Mm. So, and in two years, I cash out, refinanced, took out all the money out. Paid, you know, I've been doing minimum payment before. Then I actually pay down the line of credit now. So now I call it house money. So the, the unit is just stay there, cash flowing for free now. So your first one, you know, you need to just save money. Um, and then you can go for the uh, tertiary market. If you live in like New York, you know, you, it's basically impossible. So Touchable, yeah. <laughs> go to Buffalo or somewhere. You go to somewhere where it's like, um, you know, you can get, you know, it may be a duplex for 250K or 300K or something like that. And, you know, 20% of that is reasonable. So you can save that. And it doesn't matter how long it takes you. If it takes you two or three years to save, just save it. And then buy your first one. And if you cash flow really well, make sure you don't spend the cash flow. <laughs> Keep it, right? And cash out, refinance. Take the uh, the cash out that you cash out. You can use it to buy another property, and then you can continue to do it like that. Um, you know, you need the you know you need the plan. If you want to talk about active too, I'm willing to talk with you. You know, we do have people in every market, so there's a chance that I can find some deals that are too small for me. Then I do send it to some people in my group. I'm like, oh, here's a deal in Virginia, you know, or somewhere where I don't have a team, but. It's a good deal, I think, based on the numbers. If somebody lived down close to this deal, can you go check it out? And if you, you know, if you want to buy it, or even if you want to do a JV with me, joint venture, you can. Just you know, we just decide how we're going to split it. That's all. Sounds good. Any tax when you do this uh, refi and cash out? Any tax implication? Do you have to do a ten thirty one exchange, or you can no. keep it and still? Yes, that's the beauty of. Cash out refinance. Cash out refinance. You can cash out refinance as many times as possible without any tax implication. Right. So, All right. but if you want to sell, usually you you the tax will be due, but you usually tend to want to exchange into the, a bigger one. Great. Thank you, uh, Remy. Doctor Remy, I think you have uh, your hands up. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Cliff. Uh, thank you, uh, Doctor Adebayo. Um, uh, let me just uh, reinforce what uh, Chikude said and what everyone has said. Uh, thank you so much for uh, uh, sharing with us your, your, your success and your heart. Uh, we really appreciate that. Um, I, I am also very impressed with the, the diversity of your portfolio. Um, you know, you're doing real estate. You're doing oil and gas. You you mentioned crypto and uh, stocks, and uh, my friend, I take my hat off to you. You're doing well, and also, uh, you know, give uh, tremendous kudos to your wife. Um, you. you know, I mean, like Cliff said, it takes a it takes a humble but great man to understand that that um, you know it's a team, it's a partnership. Uh, I'm also impressed with the diversity of your portfolio within real estate. You know, you, you're focusing on the residential, you're also hitting on multifamily, commercial, and agri agriculture, and <laughs> all in field. My God, you're everywhere. And in the midst of also being a, a, a surgeon, uh, God bless you, and uh, God continue giving you success uh, for being so open and uh, honest to share with us your success. Uh, I, you know, uh, when Cliff uh, started this uh, uh, group, I think we've been privy to also hear um, Excite Group or Excite Camp. I know, I know Julius. With Dr. He's Julius. Friend, yeah. He's also been very humble and uh, sharing uh, with his uh, uh, program uh, where he's soliciting investors, and uh, that's a beautiful thing. This is the first time where I'm hearing from you 
that uh, you are willing to also open up because I'm, I'm here in Dallas and uh, since uh, Cliff opened my eyes about or oh, Cliff and Dr. Onye about the, the, the tremendous opportunity when it comes to commercial real estate. You know, I, I've been trying to figure out how to get in, you know, really not come in as an, uh, not to give someone my money, but be an active uh, participant. And, um, you know, I would love to uh, uh, learn uh, and grow uh, in this opportunity. So um, I would love to uh, maybe talk to you more and more. Uh, mm -hmm. But, um, you know, I think, you know, the, the beauty of this thing is, um, you know, one of the things that I'm really into is uh, is trust and also legacy legacy wealth. You know, at your age, at 36, to have this epiphany, this knowledge back in 2018 to understand that, look, no one knows tomorrow. Our health is not guaranteed. But let me do something that I can, while I'm still a doctor, let me, let me engage in something that will allow me to build uh, multi-generational wealth for my children. Uh, so that they don't have to start as hard as we did. And, you know, um, very familiar with the Rockefeller Trust, where you have the the wealth of the first generation builds the, the wealth of the, you know, so you get to see your great, great, grand, you may, not, you may not see them, but they will know that the, the seed that my, my father built will allow them to remember you. So my friend, I give you kudos. I, um, you know, I'm, I'm very, very impressed. I think this this knowledge should be also be given to our youth, you know, at 20, 25, you know, something like this does not yeah. need to wait for someone to become a doctor or PhD or MD to, you know, uh, you know, we talk about financial literacy. And you see this being done within the white culture, the black American culture, the Jewish culture. You know, uh, this is something that your, your, your son should be engaged with you right now, right? Yeah. Your daughter. To start ahead, uh, mm -hmm. uh, not, nothing wrong with going to school and getting a bachelor degree, but uh, it's all about financial freedom. Whether you go to school or do something like this, it's all about financial and planning, having a good plan. So I think I've talked enough, but I just want to say thank okay. you so much for your honesty, my friend. Thank you. And then we'll we post things, you know, things that we don't, you know, doesn't have a lot of like talking about returns and stuff like that. We post it on YouTube. So we're trying to, you know, I mean, even though I have like maybe 10 subscribers, but hey, <laughs> I post it out there. I also have a blog, uh, which just a regular Dr. Breed Easy Finance. That's what I started with. I used to do a blog. So, you know, but then I figured blog is good, but I don't get a lot of feedback like that from the blog, like I do doing syndication. Maybe it's personal vendata that you know i love it when people actually call me and be like hey you double my money <laughs> you know right. Right. so i'm gonna post my thing on your group too now which is my you know this is just regular how to save money general you know that's my blog i posted in the in your group great so, so that wow. I educate younger people yeah we appreciate that uh dr bayo any anybody else uh, has any burning question? We've been here over an hour now. I would like to, even though we're engaged, we'd like to keep it not too long. If anybody, Cliff, goes, yes. So we have the opportunity Somebody. to call him or email him or which one? Do you yeah. Prefer? You can and, you can text. I sent you in in your group now. So you can just. You have his phone number. You can text him. You can email him with the link. You know, right here on the screen too. You so, mentioned that doctor. You have a, a doctor partner in Dallas. Yes, George Ozude. He's also a friend with uh, Doctor Cliff. Yes, too. is orthopedic okay. surgeon. Yes. Okay, I would love to. Uh, I would love to. Uh, yes, uh, so I encourage us to reach out to uh, not just uh, Doctor Bio, but his team offline and get more information. And hopefully, you know, we can make deals here. Yeah, sure. Uh, he's even open to joint venture, and he says even he finds a deal. That is not around, he can be willing to pass it on. So I appreciate that, uh, Dr. Bayo, that you're willing to share. And this is the essence of this, uh, our investment group, is to share knowledge, learn, and work together and collaborate. So if I had one last question, I'm sorry. Oh, uh, what the, uh, Jeremy, if you're over here, take it over. That's right. Um, no, just one, no, no, on the, I just, just a quick question. On the oil and gas opportunity, are these in Nigeria or these are here in the US? Yeah. 
These are here in the US. Okay, no problem, no problem. That's it, that's it, that's it. Yeah. I try okay. not to do Nigeria. I have not cracked the code yet. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm glad it's here in the US. <laughs> <laughs> but Nigeria is good too, because that, that's fine. We'll talk offline. But um just to before we close, um, just a little bit of your experience, because you're very ubiquitous, right? So what's your, what has been your experience with uh, crypto and high frequency uh, option trading? So, you know, this is, you know, just mine. I have about 100K, which I do with called play money that I used to play options. And I, I do, you know, day trade, swing trade, because I don't have time for day trading. I do technical analysis and stuff. If you have a system, that works for you but personally i would advise not to use more than 10 percent of your net worth uh in all this kind of investment that's my advice um yes it's called asymmetric upside game which means so if you put you know if you have one million dollars you know and you put 50k into these things you can either lose it completely but if you lose it completely it doesn't do much to me you know I will still survive, but this thing hundred x, okay. So the asymmetric upside of it, uh, it's useful. I think between five to ten percent, but don't don't be going all in with things like that. You need to find a base. It's like a pyramid. The base of the pyramid has to be solid with index fund and good stocks. You know, like big ones like Apple, Tesla, like big ones. And then you know real estate, and then on top of that, let me look mild the risk here, and then just at the top a little bit, then you play some of this asymmetric upside. I do also venture capital, right? I do, you know, some some of those. They be like ten thousand dollars, and sometimes in my mind I'm like, this money is probably gone, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> so um, you know, I mean, you try to do analysis as much as you can, but yeah. this is a startup company, you know. 95 mm -hmm. percent would not be successful and mm -hmm. the of people with options or day trading will, will lose money so mm -hmm. the question is are you the five percent or are you the you know so um you know i i i won't i do it i do them i have crypto i have i'm into ethereum a lot i have you know a lot of ethereum um but you know but i'm not betting the life of my family on those investments but when you lose these things like venture capital and all this crypto can you can you write them off crypto you used to not be able to now you can so the government regulated a little bit and it worked to our people's advantage before it used to be you pay no tax and you, you cannot depreciate so if you pay tax then the other part of it is the fact that now you can deduct some of the loss so double s one says all right thank you and thanks for sharing your personal experience we really appreciate it we're all learning this any anything else guys Ngozi, anything else no that's just it i mean this has been very informative i just want to know does he mentor people um Say yes. Twice. <laughs> <laughs> lot. I'm sorry, but it's a lot of work. Um, say, say yes. <laughs> you know, it, it, I could I give advice, but uh, maybe the best way is JV might be a way to kind of mentor in a way. Yeah. Um, so that's what I'll say. And gain trust okay. too. Yes. Yeah. You know, because if you do a deal together, at least you get to see how I analyze the deal, my calculator. We have right. like software we use, then um I will we find the deal creating a team. Um you, you should read the book Tax Free Wealth. And also there's a book called Traction. Traction talks about how to start a business and how to structure your business. You know, it's like so those those books allow uh, help you kind of at least understand the structure. It also lets you know whether it's for you, because not everybody you know, can run the business, you know? So I know entrepreneurship sounds cool on the surface, <laughs> but, uh, but uh, you know, it, it takes a lot, a lot of work. And, uh, but yeah, 
if you're interested i think you should start with at least doing some deals before whether it's with me or with somebody else just you know like for example my partner he has done 20 limited partner deals before he started doing his own i've done a lot too limited partner i actually was under mentorship myself for about two years you know so i know how to do my own but i don't know how to syndicate so i know how to do it on my own you know i can buy my own property and do everything but to use take other people's money is a different level mm -hmm. so i had to join you know my partner called majestic investment group and then at first i was raising money for him then after a while I started becoming key principal. Then I started doing the deals. Then I started analyzing. Then after a while, it finally, it's almost like learning, you know, most of people are Nigerians, right? It's almost like learning how to be, uh, you know, electrician in Nigeria. So finally, <laughs> they give you the final one. It's like, here's the deal, $2.2 .2 million deal. I want you to do everything. Raise the money, do this, do this, and everything. If, you know, and I was able to raise the it was 700k I needed, so I raised it. Everything's fine, so I kind of graduated. <laughs> so <laughs> you know, that was my graduation. <laughs> I said, okay, I think you're good. So then I started raising my own money and things like that. So good yeah. deal, Doctor Bayo. Supposing somebody in our group finds a deal in their location, locale, you know, wherever, mm -hmm. is it okay? They can run it by you. Can run the numbers for them as an advice or not to see if it's a good deal or not are you able to so if they contact you they can here's the deal they, before i used to analyze about 10 deals a day now i have an acquisition manager now right who you know I get all the deals they analyze all these deals get all the 100 deals compress it into 10 mm. and then send me the 10 that's already pre-screened so you need a little bit of a skill first to be able to at least screen out the annoying ones. So also don't bring on market. If you find off market deals, maybe that's reasonable. Okay. But if you find a market on, on the market, it's already a bad deal. And also, you know, you need a little bit of some analysis. So maybe message me. I'll send you some information. You can also get on biggerpockets.com. You know, there's a calculator on bigger pockets, biggerpockets.com. So there's calculator there that will, you know, how to analyze the deal. And I can find you some videos. So that will allow you to screen out 90% of annoy that the ones that are not good, right? Mm -hmm. You know, I know I I know I sound like bad, but I don't want you to end up sending me deals that are totally like waste of my time. Right. <laughs> I want if it's compressed to in at least a decent reasonable deal then you know I'm, I'm willing to take a look at it so all right thank you bigger bigger pockets like in big like grande yes i tap it to your groups you guys have a group it makes it easier yes bigger pockets. please put the names of those books that you recommended as well okay so traction great great this has been very helpful that's all right well. Okay, I, te I texted it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay, guys. Dr. Bayer will be in touch. Thank you very much for sharing. That was exciting. That was an exciting. Very exciting. Yeah. <laughs> Chukude, next time it's going to be you. And if you get, if you get a good deal. Uh, chat, chat GPT. Exactly. <laughs> right. Let me know. Actually, I want to know too. Okay. Actually, before we go, I use chat GPT for my content too. Like, we, you know, I can say what is depreciation. It will give me content, and I post it on LinkedIn or mm. something like that, or Facebook. So, are you are uh, you guys saying Chat DBT or GPT? GPT. GPT. I say GPT. Like God, people, time. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. That is, that is that is mind blowing. That's a new. Yeah, thing. it sounds mind blowing. I have to, be a to look it up. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. Okay. So you yeah. So you mean if I buy if I buy a GPT and program it to pass the medical examination, I can become a doctor? It sounds like it will go to call you <laughs> let me chat GPT. Call <laughs> you doctor, let me chat GPT. Exactly. <laughs> so, 
Yeah, and Dr. Bayo, you're in our group. So if any time a webinar that interests you, of course, you're willing to, you know, join us. Thank you so much, man. I'll mean, right. let you guys know about future ones very soon. We have next month. Okay, okay. no right. problem. Have a great weekend, guys. Bye -bye. All right. Thank you very much.